Hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, again, the course is electronic devices and circuits, and this time uh, the lecture number two. Uh, in this lecture, we will study about the semiconductor terminologies. We uh, we said something about the term uh, semiconductor in the previous lecture. But in this lecture, we will try to understand some important terminologies, and it is really important to understand this course. So, for example, what are the terminolo terminologies? For example, what is the, the difference between the silicon and the germanium? For example, the holes, the electrons, the, the p-n junctions, the depletion layer, all these things we have to study here. And uh, But uh, we have to study uh, uh, by clearly understanding each and everything. So I, I will try my best to, to explain it uh, one by one. So now we start with the recombination. This is the important terminology, terminology used in the semiconductor uh, material. We know that the silicon is the silicon, for example, silicon or German, if they are, the, if they are pure, so they have only the silicon atoms. So they, they have four uh, electrons in their outer shells and there is, there is no free electrons under, under normal conditions. But we also know if we have this crystal, silicon crystal, and if under some conditions or special conditions or under some, under some circumstances, it is possible that some of, some of one or some of the electrons will become free from the outer shell and for example this is the case here the one of the electron is free and this free electron is capable to move from one end to another end in the crystal lattice and of course definitely if one electron is created how it is created because it it this 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 was removed from one of the of the outer shell of of an silicon atom and if the one electron is is removed from for example, this silicon atom, then there will be deficient of one electron. So this atom will exhibit as a as a positive charge. So <clears throat> it is it is it is for sure that the if one electron is free, then it means there will be one holes that is also be going to be free. So as we know. As far as if this electron is free to move here, then this is this crystal has capability to 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 uh, to, to to make a flow of current through this device under some under some uh, circum, under some conditions. So, <clears throat> so what is the recombination? If this electron gets free, as we have seen in the previous that in the previous lecture that if a silicon crystal is is applied with a with a thermal energy then due to that thermal energy one electron or more than one electron will be free so this is this is one of the case here one electron is free and as long as this moves from here to here it has capability to to make to create flow of current but because, for example, if there is one single electron in one hole, so it might be possible this electron while moving, <clears throat> it might be possible for this electron while moving from here to here, it can, it, it can, it can meet with the holes, and then the electron and hole will diffuse with each other. So they will neutralize each other. Then there will be no free electrons. Okay, so this. This is known as the recombination. So recombination is the process where the free electrons falls into the holes and they neutralize with each other, and there is the and the resultant is no free electrons. So this is known as recombination. I think there is I think there is the uh, the definition here. So <clears throat> The recombination the free electron and hole both contributes to, to conduction about the crystal lattice that is true that is true because only electron cannot make the contribution of the of the of the of the of the current flow because the conduction 
because the electron has has negative charge and the holes has positive charge so the, they both equally responsible for the contribution of the electrical conduction or the flow of the current <clears throat> now if that is the electron is free until it falls into a hole this is called recombination hope you understand pure semiconductors by themselves are not practically useful what does it mean yes after annihilation of this electron with the holes then this uh, this uh, this this material uh, it, it will have no free electrons and and the silicon atom and the silicon structure its own as its own is not practically useful for us okay because we, we will see soon why it is now the second topic is taken uh, terminology is dope semiconductor what is dope semiconductor we will try to understand it very clearly so the, if, let's suppose take an example of a silicon atom here the silicon atom has four electrons and there is no free electrons silicon is is not going to be useful silicon its own is not going to be useful for the conduction of the current because there is no free electrons okay now if we take another atom for example phosphorus which has five electrons in the in its outer shell <clears throat> in its outer shell so and if we combine silicon atom with the phosphorus what will happen the four silicon outer shell electrons and the four phosphorus outer shell electron will make covalent bond and definitely the fifth electron is 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 free to move across its crystal lattice anywhere in its crystal lattice so it means if we combine silicon and phosphorus there will be free electrons and how and why it is free electrons it's because of this phosphorus atom so this phosphorus atom is said the electron donor okay so because it uh, when we combine this one with silicon so, so there will be free electron and free electron is due to the phosphorus atom so that is why the phosphorus atom is known as electron donor okay <clears throat> take on the other hand take another example here the boron boron has only three electrons in its outer shell so it always needs it always had desire to make to attract one electron and if you combine silicon with the boron then this the, the three then this boron will attract one electron from the silicon that means why it is attracting because it has deficient of deficiency of an electron and if it attracts one electron it means it has positive charge it it can be treated uh, 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 treated as, as as a whole creator so this if we combine silicon with the boron so the the boron will be known as whole donor okay so now we uh, go further on it is possible it is it is possible to increase the number of negative charge carriers within the semiconductor crystal lattice by doping with an electron donor so this is the electron donor okay and this is the whole uh, so this electron donor like phosphorus electron donors also known as n type dopants include elements from group 5a of the periodic table so okay so this is the uh, finally we can say this is the n type dopant and this is the p type dopant okay right n type dopant p type dopant and silicon again if we have a silicon crystal and if we top one atom inside the the silicon crystal so the phosphorus everywhere we can see it's silicon but uh, we have only one phosphorus atom so one electron as we say it's a free it it create it allows a free electrons so 
the one of the free electron will be there. So the more the atom is top, <clears throat> the process combine silicon structure with impurity atom, phosphorus or boron, is known as dope doping process. So if the phosphorus <coughs> Excuse me. If the phosphorus is top with the silicon structure, there will be free electron. The more the atom is top, the more the free electrons. So this is the wonderful, wonderful process because we can make a silicon which has no free electrons. We can make it conductor by combining silicon with the phosphorus atom. So this will create. Uh, more, more free electrons so this will become a conductor so you, you have you have to notice this one we can make a silicon conductor by doping with the phosphorus atom or such type of atom so uh, finally this is the n type doping and after doping with the silicon crystal this has the free electron and it is not it is no more a pure semiconductor right it is no more pure semiconductor because we added one impure atom inside to the into the silicon structure so <clears throat> this is we can also say this is n type open or we can also say this is basically an impure atom okay so now after doping this one this is no more sil pure, pure silicon pure silicon so we cannot say it's it's a silicon so the new name of this silicon after doping with the with the, pit, with the n type open is known as n type silicon or n type material because it has it has free electrons so it's negative negative charge so n n refers basically indirectly to the, to the electrons so after doping with the phosphorus atom this new crystal is named as n type semiconductor material it's not pure semiconductor material on the other hand we can also do the same process for this one for the boron so when the boron is doped with the semiconductor crystal, so this will have this will have positive charge here because of the so hole. You can say it it has it has free holes. So hole movement, electron movement. Okay. So so the this hole because it after doping with the boron, it exhibits positive charge. So this again is not a pure semiconductor, pure silicon, but the new name of this silicon structure crystal is P-type semiconductor material or P-type silicon material. So what we get new name here, uh, the 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 n-type doping the p type doping and after doping n type semiconductor or n type silicon material and this is after doping p type semiconductor material remember n type semiconductor material has free electrons and this is has free charge free positive charge to move around its crystal hmm? hopefully you know your your understanding so now uh, it is so about this one, about this one, it is also possible to introduce an impurity atom having three electrons in the valence shell as compared with four, four for silicon. This leaves an empty spot known as hole, a positive charge carrier. Since holes are positive, about this one, since holes are positive charge carriers, also known as P-type dopant. So n type open, p type open, and this becomes n type silicon and p type silicon. Hope you understand. Now move to the next slide. 
Okay, this picture, this is the same figure as on the previous slide. So if silicon crystal is doped with electron donor like this one, the resultant crystal lattice is called n-type material. So this is the n-type material. Of course, we will we this one and this one is same, but this one is in the block form. So n-type material has access has free electrons. And similarly, if silicon crystal is doped with p-type dopant the resultant material will become p-type material so this is p-type material okay uh, remember the n-type material alone is not going to be useful okay and similarly the p-type material as uh, uh, as independent material is not going to be because if the elect the, the flow of current will be possible if we combine these two, so the electrons will move toward this one and holes will move toward this one and there will be a flow of current or we can say that this, this will become a good conductor. Next, semiconductor terminal. This is still continue with the semiconductor terminologies. So electrons and holes, we know pure semiconductors are relatively good insulators as compared with metals so though we can say that pure semiconductors are insulator but not as good insulator as glass similarly the pure semiconductors are not conductor as good are not good conductor as as good as the copper hmm? so it, its property is in between we have seen Pure semiconductor must have no more than one impurity atom in 10 billion. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So what is the pure semiconductor? For example, if we say about the pure copper, as many as many cable manufacturers, they claim that their copper is 99% pure. If it says 99% pure, what does it mean? It means that if we have 100, uh, no, if we have 99 copper atom, then it might be possible that it this, this will have one impure atom. That is, we call it as a 99% pure. If some, if some manufacturer claims they have 99.9% .9 purity. What does it mean? It means if we have 999 copper atom, then it could be possible that one atom may be impure. Okay, this is, so what about the semiconductor? The semiconductor is not like the 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 uh, the conductors pure semiconductor must have no more than one impurity atom in 10 billion semiconductor atoms. so if we have 10 billion semiconductor atom in a crystal then we say okay one may be impure atom so this is called this is the purity level of semiconductor 10 billion nowadays it's more than 10 billion so it is the process how because as we said before the silicon and the semiconductors are available on in the earth crust and it is never it is naturally it is not pure so we so uh, uh, in order to make it pure like impure uh, like 10 billion semiconductor should be pure and in this one atom may be impure so we and so the, there is a, a lot of process involved and the cleaning and the refining is involved and this was a challenge in the development of the semiconductor material when it was invented or when it was dis, uh, discovered so this was the challenge for the scientists and the engineers to to how to make its pure semiconductor how to make a pure silicon okay uh, pure semiconductors are called the intrinsic semiconductor 
so it's simply pure semiconductor is it's another name is intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor means it is pure okay means it is undoped semiconductor material as we have seen before uh, this this is doped with the pita material so this is not the pure semiconductor this is not the pure semiconductor okay so if it is undoped then we will say it's a pure semiconductor so same thing is said here that pure semiconductors are called the intrinsic semiconductor undoped semiconductor impurity atoms as we said before are impurity atoms are those atoms which are added or doped into the pure semiconductor in order to change the property of the pure semiconductor we already have discussed this a lot now come to the p n junction What is the PN junction? We already have done something. If a block of P type semiconductor is placed in contact with a block of N type semiconductor, the result is of no use. For example, if we have this is as we said before, this is the block of P type semiconductor and this is the block of N type semiconductor. So these two blocks are independent, independent blocks. They are not in contact on in contact with each other if we bring these two clause these two blocks together still it is not going to be useful because these two blocks if you brought these two blocks together there will be no use because because it's basically it there is physic there is not there is no there is no contact on the atom level be, between the two hmm? so it is again it's not useful so the problem is two separate and distinct crystal these are two separate and distinct crystal bodies <coughs> so there is no no uh, no use why we say no use because the electrons cannot move the electrons and the holes cannot be migrate cannot move from here to here one block to another block so how we do it for example, let's suppose a pure silicon crystal. This is a just assume it's a pure crystal silicon silicon. And if we have some dopant, N type dopant. Okay. And N type dopant, you remember N type dopant means means the atom which 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 is which which donates electrons. Okay. So if we dope n type dopant with the pure silicon so this is pure silicon silicon and now now it's not it's 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 impure it's not pure silicon okay it's not intrinsic material so now it is doped with the p type dopant so what will happen n type sorry n type dopant what will happen there will be, in this area there will be free electrons okay and of course surrounding uh, uh, this surrounding at this neighbor the area will have free electrons if you do the same thing but with the opposite charge that is p top n and if it add p top n so if we top the same crystal same crystal same crystal block with the p type top n means it then at this area there will be a free holes or we can say okay at this area we have free negative charge and around this area we will have free positive charge what will happen now let's see this is having free holes so the area will this free holes will 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 expand 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 and similarly this free electron will will expand its area and what will happen the free electron will be attracted by the holes so there will be migration of the electrons from from left side to right side and what will happen let's see it <clears throat> so it has more free electrons and at this area we have more free holes and this free electron will try to move towards the whole side, the positive charge side, positive charge side. 
So the, the electrons, the negative charge will move this one and the positive charge move the opposite direction. So both electrons and positive charge will meet at the center in this figure at least at the center of the semiconductor of this pure semiconductor material. So they will, they will, so we will see here, uh, we understand here, there will be a cloud of the negative charge and the positive charge. This, this will make a cloud. So, and <clears throat> if a single semiconductor with P type, I mean, the process I described is, it is written here. So if a single semiconductor with P type material at one end, P type material at one end, and N type material at the other end is made, then the P type material has positive majority charge carriers, holes which are free to move about the crystal lattice, and the N type material has negative major, majority carriers electrons, as I, as I discussed. So, after when this will soon we drop this one, and soon we drop this one, both the electrons and the holes will come close. And there will be a thin layer. There will be a cloud of of electrons and the and the positive charge. So this cloud, this thin layer, is known as p n junction. P type n type. So it's p n junction. So this junction is known as p n junction. And we will study more about the p n junction. But here, so far, as electrons and holes come close together and meet at the one point on the silicon crystal and it will create a thin layer negative and positive charges around this region this region this region this region at the center of the silicon block is known as pn junction okay. in this case it is center but uh, while manufacturing these semiconductor devices it is not always the the junction will be it is not always possible that the junction will 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 be in the center of the of the of the of the crystal lattice okay so this is uh, something about the p injection hope you understand <clears throat> now as, against the semiconductor p injection what we have seen here the single silicon crystal at one end we add we top electrons donor and at the other end, we drop with the positive charge with the whole, the whole. So soon after doping, this part will have free electrons, and the electrons will move from here to here. And this part, this end, will have positive charge, and and what will happen? Positive charge will move here. What in the net? What will happen if this electrons moves from this? cross from if, 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 if it comes close to the positive charge then this electron will combine with the holes when this electron migrate from this end to this end so because this will migrate from from this end to this end so this at this junction there will be positive charge why positive charge because the electrons has moved from this area and it's moved towards this side okay so it, it will at this end there will be a positive charge and at this end there will be negative charge the same thing will happen around this junction the electrons depart from this area to this area as electron departs it moves away so this will there will be positive and there will be negative charge hope you understand so this is this this will be a cloud of the positive and negative charge and this will create a, P, a thin p injunction layer and this because this is the plus charge and the minus charge so further electron it will stop to migrate further electron from this one this side to this side or the holes from this side to this side so after migrate after migration of the electron from here to here so there will be a, an uh, soon there will be an equi equilibrium of the positive and the negative charge and this positive charge will will repel these holes to come here and this negative charge at this end will repel 
the electrons to move more from this end to this end. So you understand the equilibrium status. The, this electron, this this layer will not further allow electron to move because this will repel each other, and this positive charge at this end will not allow the the holes of the positive charge to come here because it will repel. So soon after doping, there will be uh, there will be this type of charge. This type of layer will create, and this type of layer soon this type of layer is created it will not further allow the migration of the negative charges and the migration of the positive charges this is the important property you must have to understand uh, you if if i am unable to 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 to, uh, to go through with you so you can see some online resources for them in the youtube or you can see say you can understand but this is very essential to understand this is the essential topic you have to understand. Without understanding, don't go to the next topic. Okay, so now this layer, the positive and the negative, this layer is known as depletion region because depleted charges are depleted here and it further do not allow to move the migration. Of, so it will, it will stop the micro migration of the electrons it will stop the movement of the of the holes so what is so if something this one is not allowing the movement of the electron or the positive charge so it means this area will become an insulator because in the insulator there is no movement of free electrons so this is an artificial a insulator depletion layer is a, a we can say it's an artificial insulator area and this blocks the further movement of the why it is insulator area because it blocks further movement of the electrons and the positive and the positive charges so under this condition there will be no further flow of electrons no further flow of the positive charges did you get it so in this state is so this is the equilibrium after creating and after having an equilibrium state this electrons not allowed positive charge not allowed so now we can say this whole area this whole device this whole piece of crystal is insulator because the, the charges cannot be moved from here to here and and why it is insulator in this because of this depletion region that does not allow further to move the electrons hope you understand I, I try my best so in the figure electrons move to the right and holes which are positive charges move to the left yes that's right near the junction i mean this area electrons diffuse across the junction combining with holes in p type material the region of the p type material near the junction takes on a net negative charge because of the electrons attracted okay since the electrons departed the n type region electrons departed the n type region it takes on a localized positive charge thus near the junction a thin layer is formed because the charges has been depleted of majority carriers this is known as the depletion region okay so now the question is uh, we have to further understand what is the depletion region and you we, uh, however in this slide you can see you can see that this 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 uh, if we resemble with the battery the capacitor so this is, if is if you say this is positive charge uh, or for the battery it can be a positive uh, positive electrode and this could be a negative electrode if we have battery or the cell which has at one end it has positive electrode and the other end it has negative electron electrode so what does it mean it means that 
uh, the flow of electron is not possible unless we combine this one unless we overcome this one so for example in the electrodes so in, for the, in the case of these of the battery of the cell uh, there will be some potential voltage positive because one side has positive so there may be 0 0.7 volt 0 0.8 volt 1 volt like battery okay because battery has also at one end is positive charge and at another is positive uh, negative charge so there might be potential difference there not might be it is it is it is it is there will be a potential difference so the voltage will if we measure at this end and at this at this end so there will be a voltage and this voltage can be 0 0.7 volt 0 0.3 volt 1 volt 1.2 volt 2.2 volt depending on the material but for this silicon because we know that this is a silicon structure for this silicon structure it is well known that the voltage developed will be 0 0.7 volt okay hopefully you understand if you don't please repeat this video once again so you will understand so what we have seen this depletion region do two works it blocks the further movement of the electrons the charges so it becomes it don't it do not allow so it's become insulator and no electricity will pass from here to here and further on the depletion region creates a positive voltage and the negative voltage here for the silicon this is 0 0.7 volt for the germanium if the if the if we take germanium crystal there will be 0 0.3 volt like okay hope you understand pure and top semiconductors yeah, i don't know this okay uh, this is the same figure here we have seen the positive charge the negative charge it will have thin layer and so depletion region thus thin layer that is the depletion layer becomes non-conductive this is the important point as we said many times i am repeating many times because this is really very important property that this due to this depletion region uh, this whole crystal will become non-conductive no flow of electron in effect the region becomes nearly an insulator separating the conductive p and top conducting uh, sorry separating the conductive p and end top region this was previously conductive because the electrons were moving this was previously conducted because the holes were moving so now after development after creation of this depletion region the it will become insulator hmm? this is good pro please try to understand it very clearly okay uh, again the same figure so uh, here yes i said before because this positive area this negative area this will develop a uh, voltage here and this will develop a potential barrier this is also known as potential barrier because it is silly for silicon is 0 0.7 volt so so the electrons will not move from here to here this is those so the potential barrier or the silicon voltage or the or the depletion region voltage for the silicon is 0 0.7 volt this this separation of charges at the pn junction constitutes a potential barrier you know potential barrier the magnitude of the potential barrier is a function of the materials used in manufacturing silicon pn junctions have a higher potential barrier than germanium junctions i said germanium junction has potential of 0 0.3 volt or less this potential barrier must be overcome by an external voltage source to make the junction conduct okay so this is a barrier this barrier of 0 0.7 volt what happens how we can make it conductor in order to make it make it make 
it conductor in order to once again allow the free electrons the free charges to move from here to here what we have to do we have to break this 0.7 volt okay how this 0.7 volt can be break if we apply here at this end apply external elect external voltage here and at this end if you apply here an external voltage with a negative terminal here and with a and here the external voltage with a positive terminal and if the external voltage we apply here is greater than 0.7 volt of course this will diffuse with each other and this the barrier 0.7 voltage barrier will will break and then the electron the charges can move from here to here that's it so what we do remember the problem is the 0.7 volt barrier we cannot make it a conductor if we want to make it conductor what we have to do we have to connect uh, an external higher voltage external higher potential so if we connect an external for example if this is the 1 volt external battery source and if we connect the negative of this external power to this negative terminal and the positive with this terminal here so what will happen if this is greater if for example this is the 1 volt or 2 volt so this 2 volt will inject more electron with more potential than this 0.7 volt potential so this 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 plenty of electrons this force of electrons due to the higher voltage at this so this will I mean the, this barrier will break because 0 0.7 volt it will it will break and then the flow of the electron will be possible the electrons will flow so electrons will flow from here to here the process will continue and of course we will say that this crystal is now a conductor because it is allowing the flow of the electrons hope you understand this separation of the charges at the pn junction constitutes a potential barrier the magnitude of the potential barrier is a function of the material used in manufacturing silicon i think this potential barrier must be overcome by an external voltage source to make the junction contract so what so the condition is that this will make this will become a conductor means electrons will again move move from here to here if we apply at this junction more voltage than the 0 0.7 volt this is the condition so now this is the same figure the battery potential causes i mean this is the external the battery potential causes electrons to diffuse towards the junction if the battery voltage is great enough to overcome the junction potential 0 0.7 volt in silicon the n type electrons and p holes combine annihilating each other this frees up space with the lattice for more carriers to follow towards the junction thus current of n type and p type majority carriers flow towards the junction the recombination at the junction allows a battery current to flow through the pn junction diode such a junction is said to be forward bias now we come to the another terminal terminology this is the forward bias so before if we apply sorry if we apply to this piece of sil sil uh, silicon material with n type at this end p type at this end and if we at this terminal if we apply more voltage then its barrier voltage which is 0 0.7 for silicon then this the electrons will start to flow and this device will set to be on or this device will set to be in the forward bias why it is forward bias because negative is negative positive is positive so this is straight with this battery external supply external power this is this device is known as forward bias 
I think the time is more than 40 minutes. So we will see you in the next uh, in the next lecture. Take care, love